In this video, we're going to do some exam style questions on trigonometry. In question number one, we're asked to solve the equation 2 cos squared x minus 9 sine x plus 3 is equal to 0 in the interval for x between 0 and 2 pi radians, giving our answers as multiples of pi. If we just look at this particular equation, we've got sine x and cos squared x. In these particular cases, we want one trig ratio. That's either cosine or sine. Because we've only got sine to the first power and cosine to the second power, I'm going to use an identity to rewrite this as a quadratic equation in sine, as we saw in the last video. I'm going to write to the examiner that cos squared x plus sine squared x is always going to give us 1. That is one of our identities. Therefore, what we can write from this is that cos squared x will be equal to 1 minus sine squared x. I'm now going to rewrite the equation as 2 multiplied by 1 minus sine squared x minus 9 sine x plus 3 is equal to 0. So this is a quadratic equation in sine and I can rearrange it now in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. So we're going to have 2, 2 plus 3 is going to give me 5 minus 2 sine squared x minus 9 sine x and that is equal to 0. Just rearranging and rewriting 2 sine squared x plus 9 sine x minus 5 will be equal to 0. You could at this stage make a substitution. Again, we saw that in the last video. I'm just going to look to factor this as it is. I think I can factor this to 2 sine x minus 1 multiplied by sine x plus 5 and that would be equal to 0. So let's check that works. 2 sine squared x plus 10 sine x minus sine x minus 5 and that's equal to 0. So that works nicely. Okay, there's a hint in the question that this is going to work out quite nice as we're giving our answers as a mul or multiples of pi. That means they're going to be our special angles. So if we consider these two factors, from this one what we can say is that sine x would be equal to 1 half if 2 sine x minus 1 is naught, And from this one, we could see that sine x is equal to negative 5. Now, sine x can never be equal to negative 5. If we just consider the sine curve now, the sine curve has a maximum of 1, a minimum of negative 1. It's asking me now where the curve intercepts this line, y is equal to negative 5. The answer is nowhere for real solutions. So at this stage, we're just going to go ahead and solve this. So x is going to be equal to the inverse sine of 1 half. As stated, this gives us one of our special angles, and that will be x is equal to pi by 6 plus or minus multiples of 2 pi, or if you like, 360 degrees. By symmetry, if we have 1 pi by 6 in, we've got 1 pi by 6 back from pi, or 30 degrees in, 30 degrees back from 180, plus or minus multiples of 2 pi. This is a calculator question, so if you're unsure, shift mode 4 puts you in radians, and you'll have a little r there. So shift sine now of 0.5, the inverse sine of 0.5 gives us pi over 6. And then, of course, if we do pi minus that, we'll get 5 pi by 6. We're only interested in this from 0 to 2 pi, so clearly if we add and or subtract multiples of 2 pi, that's going to take us outside. So final two solutions, pi by 6, and you might want to put pi by 6 radians, you don't have to, and then 5 pi by 6 radians. They are our two solutions and they are multiples of pi. So that's what we do, we use the identity, we get a quadratic now in sine. If this had been sine squared and this had been cos, then I would have changed it now over to cos, as we wouldn't have an identity that we could readily change um, a, uh, one of these to the first power, whether it's sine or cosine. So there we go, nicely set up. The examiner can't fault us on what we're doing. We're very clear. We've written our identity. We've structured it. We've factored it. We've considered the solutions. Uh, we've discarded one as you could put next to that no real roots or uh, not valid. And then we've gone ahead and written them out. 
Okay, question two. In part A, show the equation 2 cos x plus 3 sin x equals 0 can be written as tan x is equal to negative 2 thirds. Again, I'm going to write my identity to the examiner. Tan x can be written as sin x over cos x as long as cos x is not equal to 0 as we can't have division by 0. It's undefined. So what I'm going to do is just write this now as 2 cos x plus 3 sin x is equal to 0. Subtracting the 2 cos x from both sides, 3 sin x is equal to negative 2 cos x. I'm going to divide both sides by 3 and both sides by cos x. So I'll have sin x over cos x is equal to negative 2 over 3. Sin x over cos x gives us tan x. So tan x is going to be equal to negative 2 thirds. And I'm going to write as required. You can write QED. Um, I generally uh, avoid doing it purely based on the fact that if you've got it wrong, you can look very silly. This is a show that. Um, it might be, it says show the equation. Show that the equation would probably be better wording. Make sure you're explicit in what you're doing. That would only be worth two marks, but for one mark is so easy to give away. I'm not fussed that it took me an additional 10 or 20 seconds. The examiner can't touch this. Identity, written it out, being very clear in what I'm doing. Don't just jump from here to here. Don't just jump from there to there. Be explicit. Okay, in part B, hence or otherwise, solve the equation 2 cos of theta over 2 plus 3 sine of theta over 2 is equal to 0. In the interval where theta is between 0 and 360 degrees, giving your answer to three significant figures. So it's telling me if there's only one answer. Okay, hence. Hence means that we're going to use this part of the question right here to go ahead and solve the next part. What we can write, and you don't have to, we can write in part B, if we just write here, from part A, so part A, we can see now that this can be, so 2 cos x plus 3 sine x equals 0, uh, can be written as, I wouldn't write this out, um, uh, can be written, I'm not suggesting you write this at all, uh, it can be written as, I'm just kind of showing the hence bit here, uh, as tan x, so tan x is equal to negative 2 thirds. Therefore, what we're going to have now is the following. I'm simply going to swap the theta over 2 for the x. I wouldn't write that out. I'm just sort of showing you. Um, therefore, what we can say is tan of theta over 2 is going to be equal to negative 2 thirds for part b. This here is exactly the same as this, other than that x is swapped for theta over 2. So what we're going to do, I would just start a question by saying tan of theta over 2 is going to be equal to negative 2 thirds. Principal value, and again you don't have to write principal value, theta over 2 is going to be equal to the inverse tan. Tan to the minus 1 on your calculator of negative 2 thirds. So let's go ahead and do that. We need to be in degrees mode. Shift, mode, 3. Inverse tan, shift tan, and we've got now negative uh, 2 thirds. So negative 2 divided by 3. This will give us a principal value, and that's negative 33.69 and so on and so forth. So theta over 2 is going to be equal to negative 33.69. Let's just go ahead and check that. 33.69 dot, 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 and so on. Now, this is a tan uh, equation. Therefore, it's going to be multiples of 180. From this, we can say theta multiplying through by 2 is going to be 2 lots of negative 33.69 dot, 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 plus or minus multiples of 360. So what we can say then, if you want, you could write this out. We can simply write on here that it's going to be now 360 minus two lots of the 33.69. Entirely up to you on how you want to write that. But if we just consider, if I multiply this by two, so multiplying this by two, that's going to give me that. Now I need to add, and you might want to show that in your working, I probably would. Um, and then we're just going to add 360 degrees. So if we add 360, 292.6. So let's put this in. Theta is equal to 292.6, dot, 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 dot. So I'm going to say theta to three significant figures is 293 degrees, and that's 3SF. 
So that now is done and we simply used part A as stated. This is just, this is not necessary, I'm just sort of giving you an example of how it works if you're asked to explain it. And we've gone ahead and solved the second equation uh, by simply now swapping x for theta over 2 and then solving in the interval. Question 3 in part A. If x is equal to 3 cos theta minus 1 and y is equal to 3 sine theta plus 2, show that x plus 1 all squared plus y minus 2 all squared is equal to r squared, stating the value of r. Okay, let's go ahead now and look at this. I'm going to again write to the examiner. Remember, these are new questions. I'm going to write that cos squared theta plus sine squared theta will always give us 1. So with this, I'm going to use a trig identity. I'm going to get an expression for x in terms of cos theta. So adding 1 to both sides, dividing by 3, x plus 1 over 3 is equal to cos theta. I'm going to get now an expression for y, or sine theta in terms of y. So y minus 2 divided by 3 is equal to sine theta. So if I square this and square this, and add them together, I'm going to get 1. Therefore, what I'm going to say is that x plus 1 divided by 3, all squared, plus y minus 2 divided by 3, all squared, will be equal to 1. So rewriting x plus 1 all squared over 3 squared, which is 9, plus y minus 2 all squared over 3 squared, which is 9, will give us 1. We're going to multiply through and we're going to have x plus 1 all squared plus y minus 2 all squared. And multiplying through by this 9 gives us 9. This is the equation of a circle, centre negative 1, 2 and a radius now of the root of 9. So r is going to be equal to 3. We've got the positive square root of 9. So all I've done is use a trick identity and shown that we can write this as the equation of a circle. In part b, it says sketch the graph of x plus 1 all squared plus y minus 2 all squared is equal to r squared, showing any points of intersection with the corner axis in exact form. So what we're now doing is switching up to another topic, and we're looking at the equation of a circle. So as stated, this gives us a circle, negative 1, 2 is the centre, and we've got a radius of 3. So let's just draw this up. We're asked for the points of intersection with the coordinate axis in exact form. So what we're going to do, I'll just put this on. So this is just a sketch. So negative 1, 2, we'll put just there. So neg 1, comma 2, that is the centre. We need a circle with a radius of 3. So it's going to look something, give or take, that's not massively accurate. Let's put that in place. But it just gives some representation of what's going on. And what we're interested in is where now this crosses the coordinate axis. So what we'll consider now is the following. If we look at this, these two points here are going to be on the y-axis. This is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. So we can say when x is equal to 0. So let's look at x is equal to 0. If x is equal to 0, we will have 1 plus y minus 2 all squared is equal to 9. So subtracting the 1, we've got a quadratic in y. y minus 2 all squared is equal to 8. Square root in both sides, y minus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 8. Adding 2 to both sides, I'm going to simplify root 8 as 2 root 2. So plus or minus 2 root 2. So that now gives us the two points. So this one here is going to be the point, and we can write this on as x is 0, and then we're going to have y is 2 plus 2 root 2. This one just here is going to be now where x is equal to 0, and y is going to be 2 minus the 2 root 2, which we've just gone ahead and solved. OK, let's now consider when y is equal to 0. What we're going to have is x plus 1 all squared plus, and if y is equal to 0, negative 2 squared is going to give me 4, and that's going to be equal to 9. So x plus 1 all squared is equal to 5. x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. So x is going to be equal to negative 1 plus or minus root 5. So let's go ahead and look at that one. 
this one is going to be negative 1 plus root 5. So negative 1 plus root 5 comma 0. And this one right here is going to be now negative 1 and then minus the root 5 comma 0. So we've gone ahead and solved and turned essentially a trig question into the equation of a circle and looked at solving quadratics to find those points. So in an exam, don't expect every question to focus on one and one only topic. It might jump around or expect you to link knowledge uh, between topics. Question four, show that the equation two sine x equals three tan x has two solutions in the interval for, z for x between zero and two pi giving the solutions as multiples of pi. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at dealing with this. So what we're going to have then is the following. We're going to have 2 sine x is equal to 3 tan x. I'm going to write to the examiner that tan x is going to be now sine x over cos x. At this stage, I'm simply going to go ahead now and multiply through. So writing this as 2 sine x is equal to 3 sine x over cos x, multiplying through 2 sine x cos x is equal to 3 sine x. I'm now going to uh, substitute 3 sine x on both sides. 2 sine x cos x minus 3 sine x is going to be equal to zero. We do not divide by sine x. If we do, we're now going to potentially lose valid solutions. We saw this in a, a previous video. If we have x squared is equal to x, if I divide both sides by x, that gives us that x is equal to one. Yet if we subtract the x from both sides, x squared minus x is equal to zero, factoring x, x minus one is equal to zero, we could see that x could be 0 or x could be equal to 1. We can divide through to produce trig identities, as I'm doing here, but we don't divide through and lose solutions. So let's go ahead. We've got now sine x is a common factor. So all I'm doing is, is factoring this. And this, again, is very similar to a, a building question that we've looked at previously. So sine x, and then we've got 2 cos x minus 3 and that's equal to 0. So we've got now that sine x, so sine x is equal to 0 or we've got now 2 cos x minus 3 is equal to 0 so cos x would be equal to 3 over 2. Now cos x cannot be equal to 3 over 2 as we've seen time and time again. 3 over 2 is just here We've got now, that would be y is 1.5, 3 over 2. We've got a maximum value of 1. Therefore, we've got no real solutions to this particular equation. So let's deal with this one. You can take the inverse sine of 0. Alternatively, if we just consider now the graph, where is it 0? Well, it's 0 here. Now, we're dealing with uh, pi, uh, pi here, so multiples of pi. So these are radians. So that's pi, and this right here is going to be 2 pi. We're interested in x between 0 and 2 pi, but it's not uh, inclusive of 0. So what we can say then is x is going to be equal to pi, and again, you can write radians, or uh, just leave it as pi, and then 2 pi radians. So that now is giving our answers as multiples of pi. So all I've done is, again, written to it, and tan x is, is equal to sine x over cos x. I've multiplied through by cos x. I've then gone ahead and seen that we've got a common factor, sine x, factored it, um, and then considered now uh, for solutions. We know that uh, cos x can never be equal to uh, 3 over 2, and then we look at sine x is equal to 0 in the interval and give our solutions as multiples of pi. So there we go, four exam-style questions on trigonometry.